Okay, hello guys. Uh, this is the second tutorial in my series of uh, Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. In this one, it's going to be a little bit of a larger one. We're going to discuss uh, AI, AI navigation, and uh, so nav mesh volumes, uh, artificial intelligence again to chase you. So this is effectively going to be a zombie. Um, it's not, there's going to be no shooting involved, no health, or cover health, and things like that in a later tutorial. This is just going to be a zombie that when he sees you, he'll chase you, and if he doesn't see you, he will just move to a random point. So the first thing we're going to do is the most important, and that's to create a nav mesh. A nav mesh is essentially data that's stored as to where the character can move. So we're going to uh, go over here to volumes, and we're going to find a nav mesh bounds volume, and drag that out onto our map. Now we need to stretch this to cover the rest of the map. Don't worry about it being too high or too low, uh, as long as it covers the whole map. So we're just going to drag that up a little, like so. And I believe that now if we compile that, I'll save that even. Oops, it is this. Nav mesh bounds volume. Pressing P should have toggled a thing, but um, what we're going to do is quickly just build that. Okay. Okay. So, we have a nav mesh bounds volume. Now we're going to create our AI. And we're going to do that by finding our character within blueprints, my character, and we're going to duplicate this. We're going to name this AI. Now within AI, we're going to head to the graph and we're going to delete all of this. We will not need any of this. In the components, we can leave this the same and just remove the camera component, as we won't be needing that either. So we simply just have a player within a cube with the blueprints attached to it. So, we need to jump back out to our graph now, actually, I'm a, I apologize, there is one component that we need to add to this, and that is the AI pawn sensing. Add this component to it, and then compile. You'll now see that we have all of these lines. The green one is the one that we're interested in, as the green uh, represents its, its seeing ability. Now, obviously, nobody can see with like a, a straight, flat angle like that. No one has a, that perfect 180 degree vision. So we're going to make that a little more realistic by uh, reducing this size. Something like that seems more realistic. Wouldn't you agree? So we'll leave that there. That means if we're behind him, he's not going to see us. But once we move into his, into his vision here, he'll see and start to chase us. So we'll compile that. Now let's get on with the hard work. With inside the graph, we now need a... Uh, a C, and it's an event. I don't remember its exact name. Um, I apologize. I'm, I've got my other project over up on the other screen. I'm just going to quickly tab out to that and just quickly look at what I'm looking for in there. On C pawn, that's the one. Okay, so on C pawn. Okay, I'm not too sure why that's not showing up. Perhaps I need a reference to it. Did I compile it? I'm not too sure if I can. Comp okay, compile it. On C. On. Oops, there we go. Okay, so context sensitive. Add on C pawn. Zoom in on that. So there you go. Okay, so the next step would be to cast this to my character, because that's what we're looking for. Cast to character, like so. So, when the pawn sensing one, when the green zone detects my character and nothing else, then we're going to proceed to do a few things. The first thing, we're going to do this relatively simply actually, we're not going to have different variable move speeds and other things that I had on my other one, we're just going to move to. So we're going to look for an AI 
move two, like so. Now, the pawn that we want to move is our self. So we're going to get a reference to our self. We're going to move this, which is the AI that we're working on. Where we're going to move to is the character. So when we see it, we want to move to the character. That is uh, very simply all that we really need to do for that. So let's just uh, give that a quick test by dragging an AI into the world and hitting play. So when he sees me, you can see that he now runs to me. And if I can get out of his, his vision, he'll stop. Again, walking into his vision means that he'll chase me. And if I can get out of his vision, he'll stop chasing me. And they're relatively smart, so he can jump off a ledge. You can also make it so that he can't jump off a ledge, so that he'll have to run all the way back. Um, but I'm not going to get straight in, right into that now. So, that's a relatively simple uh, tutorial for him chasing you. But what if you don't want him to stand still? Well, now we can make it so that he randomly moves to a place on the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. Uh, actually, no, we're not. We're going to get an event tick, which is our other type of event. Now we're going to create a variable called uh, in range. So, when he sees the character, we need to set the set in range. Oops, I forgot to compile it, so it's not going to be there. Set in range. In range is two words. I should just set that there. So we're going to set in range to true because he's in range of our prof in, of our vision. Now, from here, we need a branch. We only want this to execute if we're not already looking at him. So we're going to get that. So, by default, in range is set to false, which means he can't see us. If he can see us, he'll set it to true, and he'll chase after us like we just saw with that. So, what are we going to do if he can't see us? Well, again, we're just going to do a simple AI move to. However, the destination this time is going to be a get random or sorry, not random, it's just random. Uh, I'm not too sure. Random point in radius. You may have to untick the context sensitive there. Random point in radius. And the radius, we're just going to set this actually to... Actually, I'm sorry, we're not going to use this radius. I was thinking about something else. Random point. This will just move him to a random point on the nav mesh that we have created. Now, what we now need to do is create another variable called moving. The problem with this, as it currently stands, is it will say, OK, we can't see him move to this destination. And then as soon as it's done that, it'll say, OK, we can't see him move to a new destination. OK, we can't see him move to a new destination. And I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. Essentially, he's, he's gathering a new Inform a new location to go to like every 0 0.1 seconds so he should if I'd have done that right he should have just just freaked out not really gone anywhere which, which is sort of what he did so if a range is false get a random point and AI move to I'm sorry we didn't select which palm was going to move we need an, a reference to self there so that may be why he didn't spaz out like I wanted him to to demonstrate. Okay, let's um, drop ourselves up here and see if we can... No, okay. Never mind, I tried to demonstrate why that was wrong, but uh, I kind of need you to take my word for it that it is wrong. In fact, what we'll do is, I will we'll demonstrate it, we'll just disconnect that. So what he's going to do is try and move to a random point, and he's, you see how he's jittering about, he's, he's going somewhere, but he's he's not sure where he wants to go, he's constantly getting a new bit of information and he's trying to move to the new location and it's all just really going wrong for this guy. So let's fix him. Now this new variable called moving 
we're going to set moving to true. We're also going to copy this and set moving uh, on success and on fail to false. And now after this false, we need another branch with the condition this time being moving. So let's quickly talk through this. If he can't see us, we can cut that back up now. If he can't see us, and he's not already moving, wait a minute, if moving is false, sorry, not true. So if he can't see us, and he's not already moving, get, him, get a new destination and move to that. As soon as, you, as soon as he begins moving, he's going to set moving to true, which means that this event tick will never get past this point until he either successfully or fails to reach his destination, at which point it will allow this gate to open and he'll get a new destination and he'll move towards it. So let's take off the pawn sensing for a moment and just take a quick look at how that works. So he's going to run to the destination he set and then, I don't know why he stopped there, maybe that was something to do with the nav mesh. He's going to, he moves to the destination that he set and then he will get a new one. So his destination's in the corner and he's looking for new, he seems to be setting the same destination over and over again and now he's off to somewhere new. Thinking about it, going to look for a new location and he'll be off to somewhere new again. Now when we couple this, these two together, we have an AI that roams around randomly and if he sees us, he'll chase us. So he spotted us. Let's just run and try and get out of his vision. Now if I can stay behind him, he should move to a random point. Actually he won't do, because what's happened is We've set this to true because he spotted us and there's no way of setting it back to false. So after he's seen us once, it will never go back to moving to a random place. Now a way that we can do that is we can have um, on, actually I don't think there's a on C pawn sensing off button. So I'll, uh, I'll set that as a challenge, you'll have to figure that out yourself. Uh, so yeah, so what you have there then is an AI that wanders around. Let's just see if we can play from uh, current camera location. So he wanders around randomly and I think he's spotted me. Nope, he's not seen me yet. So he's randomly wandering around. He's looking for somewhere new to go. Although if he did stop me, he'd stay in that corner. Yeah, he spotted me in that corner and he can't get to me again because the nav mesh means that he can't actually get up to that wall. So there you have it. There's a very basic AI movement, basic chasing, and then a basic moving to a random point within the third person template. Um, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I apologize if it was a little bit slapdash, a little bit as uh, so I didn't know what I was doing. I did have to reference uh, my other work for a moment just to double check, but I didn't want to be giving you the wrong information and trying to guess along the way, so I thought it would be better just to tab out and quickly check that. Um, I'll be doing more tutorials, as I said. This is just the second one in a series. Um, I'll be looking at creating worlds. I'll be looking at post-processing volumes. Um, we can take a look at uh, changing speeds, crouching. Uh, line tracing is an important one. So that would be, uh, if you notice in the first person template, when you fire, you fire a projectile. This would be instead using something that uh, games like uh, Call of Duty uh, most first person shooters use a line trace and I'll be going into that, into more into that, what that is and how it applies in Unreal Engine 4 in a later tutorial. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you found this useful, please give it a like, comment any questions you have, I'll re respond to them as quickly as possible. Um, and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss another tutorial. Thanks guys, take care.